I'm getting ready to install my oil pump. I've already bolted it on a while ago. And it goes right here. And I checked the clearance because uh, it's just want to make sure I have room between my crank and the, oil, and the oil pump. And I had I had clearance on there. So here's my original oil pump drive shaft. You can see it's got some pretty bad wear on there. That's the pump end. Here's the distributor end. So it's just not worth risking using this again. If this fails, your whole engine's gonna fail because you want any oil pressure. So I bought the fancy ARP. So that tells you which ends up. And this keeps the drive shaft from falling out. So I'm gonna put it in place and I'm gonna start measuring for my, uh, my pickup. Make sure I got the right length for my new pan. Okay, oil pump's in. Uh, you have to check, make sure you have some play in the drive shaft there between the, the collar this collar on the top, I don't know what it is, and the block. If it's too tight, then it'll rub every time it spins. And if it's too loose, then your drive shaft would fall out. So that's good. I also checked on the other side just to make sure that the drive shaft is in the correct hole where the distributor goes. So now I'm gonna measure my pan uh, and make sure that my pickup right height. All right, here's my uh, stock oil pan. Uh, it's front sump, because that's how the cross member yeah, the cross member goes underneath here, or cross member engine support, whatever, goes right here. So um, I don't like this design, and that's really all I could do, but anytime you accelerate, it, oil just sloshes towards the rear and just goes up this nice little ramp into the back, and it's not that deep in the back. So when I measure it, uh, I get three and three quarters. So if I look at my engine here, this is when the crank is the lowest. It's not much clearance there between the bottom of the pan. And it's not gonna hit, but if you get a half inch oil in there because it's sloshed back, it's definitely gonna hit, hit the crank and the crank is just gonna froth it up or you know create drag, anyway. So the new pan isn't any deeper in the back because you, know, you have a cross member there, but it is a lot deeper in the front so the oil won't slosh back and it's got a baffle in it. All right, here's the new pan. Uh, you can see it kicks out on the sides, give me some extra oil. It's also deeper in the front. Uh, same in the back to clear the cross member. It's in baffled. It's just got a real simple baffle because when you start getting uh, real nice baffles in here that go around the pickup tube. It adds like, uh, for some reason, it adds $200 to the cost. I don't understand why, but so uh, this got a nice, pretty deep baffle in there, so it won't get a lot of oil slashing back. The only negative with this is that the oil drain is on the front, and since the, the engine tends to slope a little bit back in a, in a car, it's going to leave some oil in the pan, so I'm going to have to jack it up when I drain it so that it drains out the front. Not a big deal. Don't drain it very often. All right, so the new pan measures uh, nine and a quarter inches deep. I don't know if you can see that or not. And I had to bend the tube a little bit. It had a lot more clearance than that, and I kind of scratched it up, but no big deal. So I have about a half inch clearance now. That's that's good enough for me. I'm gonna have two extra quarts of oil in there, so I don't want it too close, because then it'll suck itself to the bottom of the pan. So. All right. Uh, I think I'm next I'm gonna put my dipstick in just to, to see how it looks. And uh, it shouldn't make any difference as far as the full mark, because uh, it's just gonna have a deeper pan and just gonna hold more oil in it, but I just wanna make sure it's not gonna hit anything. All right, uh, oil pan's on. I am just using this uh, Felpro Permatex Dry or Perma Dry. I don't know. It's a one piece rubber seal with a, a steel, I guess it's silicone, with a, you know, a metal backbone to it to keep it stiff. I put a small dab of RTV in each of the four corners. And then I also put a small bead right where the timing cover meets the block across there. Uh, that's it. They recommend putting it on dry. So that's what I did. And I torqued all the, the quarter 20 bolts 
to eight foot pounds. And uh, I guess these are five sixteenths. I torqued them to 10. So I'm gonna let that sit for a while and I'll come back and check it again after the, the RTV seals up. But uh, bolts look pretty nice. Sorry about that. <laughs> the bolts look pretty nice, but you'll never see them. So 